Hello, this is Ed from PracticalNetworking.net. Welcome to another video in the video series on Access Control List on Cisco routers. This is video 3, where we'll be doing a demonstration of the configuration of numbered access lists. In the last video, we stepped through each of the fields in a numbered standard access list and a numbered extended access list. In this video, we'll be configuring access lists together to match some of the packets in this topology. We're going to configure an extended access list as if it were being applied right here on that router, which means we'll be able to match traffic coming in from the inside out to the internet. Just like we explained in the last video, to configure an access list, we're always going to start with the command access list. So I'll jump into global configuration mode and type in access list. Then I'll specify an ID number. Now we want to configure an extended access list, which means we have to choose an ID number between 100 and 199. For simplicity, we'll just go with 101. Now I have to specify an action. If you recall, there are three possible actions, permit, deny, and remark. We'll start pretty simple and just start with a remark. Remember in the last video, I said that if you use the action of remark, the rest of the syntax is simply a free text field, and you can apply any comment that you will want. I could say something like, my first ACL, and the command will take. This allows me to document my access control list if I need to. But of course, since this is just a remark, I'm not actually matching any traffic. So now let's actually match this packet right here. Again, I'll start with the same command, access list, and we'll use the same ID number, 101, so that it all comes to be a part of the same access list. The action here is going to be permit. I'm going to go ahead and allow this packet through. Now I get to specify the protocol. For this one, I'm still going to specify the IP protocol. I'm going to match any IP traffic that matches between host A and this top server over here. I'm going to keep it simple and do it just by IP address. So I'm going to specify that I want to match a source IP address of 10.0.0.11 and a destination of 54.4.4.7. If I hit enter here, you'll see that this line follows the syntax we described in the last video. We have the command access list, the ID number, the action, the protocol, the source, and the destination. Now notice we specified the source and destination using the host keyword. I told you there are three options for how you specify IP addresses on a Cisco router. One of them was specifying a single IP address using the host keyword. Next, let's do another entry where we specify an entire subnet. We're going to permit all IP traffic from the inside network to this bottom server down here. To do that, again, I'll start with the command access list. I'll use the ACL ID number 101. This is also going to be a permit statement. The protocol will also be IP, except here I'm going to put in the network ID and the wildcard mask that correlates to a slash 24 network, which is 0.0.0.255. And as my destination field, I'm going to add the single IP address of the uh, server at the bottom over there, 45.5.5.8. So here we provide an example of specifying a single IP address. We've also provided an example of specifying a subnet. Finally, let's give you an example of specifying the any keyword. This will match all IP addresses. We'll go ahead and create another entry in Access List 101. This is also going to be a permit statement. This time though, let's match the protocol ICMP. This will match pings and trace routes and those types of traffic. For our network, we can say that any source can send pings to any destination. So we'll just use any as both the source and the destination. This is telling the router that anybody sending ICMP traffic is accepted and allowed across this network. So, so far, we've configured four access list entries together. Let's see how those look in my configuration. If I do a do show run and I pipe for the section that starts with access list, I'll see what I've just configured. Here are the four entries that I've just configured, and you'll see they match what we typed in pretty much exactly. Now those are some pretty basic access list entries to simply show you some of the syntax in action. Notice we didn't specify any ports though. So let's go ahead and add a couple more entries that do specify ports. To start, I'm gonna create an access list entry that's going to match this packet exactly. It's gonna match that packet in the most specific way possible. So again, I'm gonna start with a command access list. The ID number is going to be 101. I'm going to continue adding entries to the same access list. 
the action is going to be permit, but this time the protocol is going to be TCP. In this illustration, it's not listed, but we can simply assume that this is a TCP packet. For the source section, I'm going to match this entire first line over here. The IP is going to be a single IP address, 10.0.0.11, and the port number must equal 7777. And then for the destination section, I'm going to match this line exactly. The IP address is going to be a single IP address, and the port number is going to equal port 80. This access list entry has just matched this packet in the most specific way possible. Remember how I told you that extended access list can match across five different attributes of a packet? Well, this one line is proving that by matching across all five of them. We have the source IP, the destination IP, the source port, the destination port, and the protocol. But let's talk about it for a second. When host A shot this packet out, it randomly picked the source port 7777. In fact, every time a new connection is made, the client is going to pick a new random port number. So it's great that we are able to match this packet explicitly, but it's not going to match any future TCP port 80 packets sent by host A. So it's rare to see an access entry where you're matching on both a source port and a destination port. Often, when you're trying to match a particular type of traffic, for example, web traffic like this packet is, you're only going to match on the destination port and you're going to omit the source port. Which means typically that access list entry would look like this. It start out with the same command, same action, same port, except in, when specifying my source, I'm not going to specify a port number. What that is doing is saying match all ports. The destination part will look exactly the same to specify that I'm matching exactly destination port 80. Omitting the port in the source allows for my router to accommodate any random port that host A picks whenever it's sending web traffic to this IP address. So this is typically the way you would see an access list that's matching a particular port number. Now keep in mind, if you're matching the response traffic, which means if you're trying to match this packet right here, then you might end up seeing the port number specified on the source side to match this right here, and then the destination part omitted to account for whatever random port number might have been selected by host A. But for our purpose, we'll continue looking at just the outbound traffic. So let's take a look at everything we've configured so far. I'm going to go ahead and do my show command from before to take a look at our access list. Notice our access list has six lines. One remark, a couple permit IP lines, a permit ICMP line, and then uh, some permit TCP lines. So at the moment, I've got all permits. Now there's still a question we haven't answered, and that is, what happens if a packet shows up on our router that doesn't match any of these entries? Well, from the router's perspective, these entries are explicitly telling the router which packets to allow through. If a packet shows up that doesn't match one of these explicit permit statements, the router's gonna take a restrictive stance and say, if you didn't explicitly tell me to allow the traffic, I'm going to deny it. This is called the implicit deny, and it exists at the end of every single access list. Even though you don't see it, at the end, there is a simple deny IP any any, which will prevent any other traffic from coming through the router interfaces. So again, these are all explicit permit statements, and at the end of every access list is an implicit deny statement denying all traffic not specifically permitted in the access list itself. So technically, at the end of this access list, everything else is being dropped. Now just for the sake of showing you a deny statement, we're going to go ahead and configure a deny statement to deny a particular type of traffic. Specifically, we want to deny any NTP traffic from host A to that bottom web server down there. So NTP stands for Network Time Protocol. It uses UDP port 123 for its communication. So we're going to create a new deny statement in this access list that's going to deny this packet right here. Well, just like before, we'll start with the command access list. We'll add it to ACL 101 to continue adding to the same access list. This time, the action is going to be deny. The protocol is going to be UDP. Again, it's not in the illustration, but let's just go ahead and assume that this is a UDP packet. And now we specify the source. 
we're going to specify the source the way we did over here, where we don't use a source port number. Because again, every time host A creates a new NTP connection, it's going to re-randomize the source port number. We'll specify the source IP address, however, as host A. The destination is going to be the IP address of the server at the bottom. And then the destination port is going to equal 123. The idea is this deny statement is going to match this packet. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our show command again to see the entire axis list. Here is everything we've configured. And we did indeed configure this deny statement to accurately match this packet. But there's a problem. This packet is still being allowed through. Let me tell you why. The way packets are matched in an axis list is based upon what's called first match. Meaning, when this packet shows up on this router interface, the router takes a look at the first entry in the access list and tries to see if there's a match. Well, in this particular case, the first entry is a remark, so we're not even going to look at that line. So it'll then look at the next line. The router's going to ask itself, is this the IP protocol? Yes. Is the source 10.0.0.11? Yes. Is the destination 54.4.4.7? No. So we don't have a match here, so now the router's going to look at the next line in the ACL. Is the protocol IP? Yep, because the UDP protocol is carried within IP, so this is still an IP packet. Is the source in the subnet 10.0.0.0 slash 24? Yep. Is the destination 4555.8? Yep. This packet matches this line, and therefore this action is going to be taken. So even though we configured this correctly, we have a problem because this line will match this packet first. To fix this, I would have to have this line appear above this line, or alternatively, this line appear below this line. This is an important fact about access list, is that they are processed based upon first match. So we just went through a few configuration examples of a numbered extended axis list to match traffic in our topology over here. We covered the basic configuration of axis list, and then we also covered two specific important points. The first is that at the end of every single axis list is an implicit deny. The idea is any traffic not explicitly permitted is assumed to be undesired and therefore dropped by the router. And the second is that the order of the entries in the A cell matter. ACL entries are processed based upon first match. So there's one last thing I want to show you. Let me pull up our configuration again, and let's see if we can fix this. Remember, we said the problem was this more specific deny statement needs to happen before this less specific permit statement. So what we can do is simply remove this entry and reconfigure it at the end. So what I can do is take that command, put a no in front of it to blow away that entry, but we're going to have a problem. If I right now do my show run command again, you'll notice everything has been blown away. One of the limitations with numbered access list is that when you do a no on a particular entry, you actually blow away the entire ACL. In order to reorder individual lines, what I would have to do is reconfigure the entire ACL from scratch in the correct order. That is a limitation with numbered access list that doesn't exist with named access list, which we're going to be looking at in the next video. The key takeaway for this video is understanding the demonstration of the ACL entries we configured, as well as understanding the implicit deny and that the ACL entries are processed on first match. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video as we looked at named access list and some of the additional features they provide above numbered access list.